Hello and welcome to Archie Corner. My name is Josue Diaz. I am a licensed architect in the state of California. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about fire rated walls. More specifically, how to find a specific design when you need a fire rated wall. Now, there's different reasons why you may need this. For example, you may need a fire rated wall to separate different occupancy groups. You may also need a fire rated wall when you are talking about egress, perhaps you're creating an exit passageway or something like that. Whatever the case, there's many reasons and many scenarios when you need fire rated walls. So today we're going to talk about how to find out a specific design that can help you in a project when you need one. So if you want to know more, don't go anywhere. You're about to find out. Okay, so let's get right into it. Whenever you need a fire rated wall, you need to know at least two things. The very first thing you need to know is what components your wall is made out of. For example, you, you probably already know what components there is. If it's an interior wall, maybe you already know that you need a, a wall that has two by four wood studs and you need gypsum wall board on each side. Or perhaps it's going in a location where a wet wall is needed, like in a restroom or near a shower. For whatever reason, trust me, it happens. In this case, then you know that you may need perhaps cement board panels or glass mat panels or something like that. Or perhaps it's not even an interior wall, perhaps it's an exterior wall. So you're thinking, I may need stucco, I may need siding or something like that. Whatever the case, the point is that the first thing you need to know is what type of wall you need and a general idea of what components you're looking for. The second thing that you need to know is how many hours you need of rating. We created a video in the past. There will be a link in the description below as to that video and perhaps you'll see one on your screen now. In the past we talked about what fire rated walls are and how they're classified. In that video we talked about there being one hour, two hour, three hour, and four hour rated walls. Once you know that, once you know the components and you know how many ratings and hours you need, then you can go on to figuring out how or what design you can use for that specific situation. So let's assume for now that we need a two hour fire rated wall. We're going to talk about two options on how you can find a design. So let's go into it and look at option one. In IBC Chapter 7, you will find Table 721.1 parentheses 2. The first thing you need to do in this table is look for the materials that you're trying to use. The table shows materials. For example, here you'll see options for brick, concrete masonry units, solid concrete, and things like that. Now, in here, let's just assume for a minute that we're looking at concrete. In the options for concrete, we have different concrete types. And let's assume that we know we're going to be using lightweight concrete. So here you see lightweight concrete. Then we simply figure out how thick the concrete wall has to be to reach the appropriate hour rating. Here in these columns, you see that there are ratings for one hour, two hour, three hour, and four hour ratings. For this example, if we wanted a two hour rated concrete wall, we simply use this column for a two hour wall and it will let us know what the wall thickness has to be. In this case, it's 3.6 inches thick. And that is it, you're done. If you had to prove to a plan checker that this is a two hour concrete wall or a two hour rated wall, you can say that this two hour concrete wall design is based on IBC table 721.1 parentheses two. Item number 4-1.1. Notice how in this example, the rating is dependent on the thickness which is what I wanted to show you. The thicker the thickness, then you get more rating. Now let's compare that to a second example. Let's again say that we need a two hour rated wall, but this time let's assume that we need an interior wall with wood studs and gypsum wall board on each side. When we look through the table, we go down, we're skipping it here, but when we get to the point here, you're gonna find a section that has wood studs for interior partitions with gypsum wall board on each side. Now, similar to the concrete wall, this will also have a few options here. Some options have two by four studs at 16 inches on center. Others have two by fours at 24 inches on center. So what I like to do is I start with the hour of ratings and then work myself back. 
because there may be many options on types of walls, but I know, for example, that I need a two hour rated wall. So I simply look at the options for two hour rated walls and ignore all of the others. It just so happens that in this scenario, we only have one wall that has a two hour rating. That makes it easy because it narrows down my options to just one. And if you see here, it tells you the wood stud spacing, the thickness of the gypsum board on each side, and then even tells you the fastener types to use and the spacing they have to be placed at. And again, if I had to prove to a plan checker or inspector that this wall is a two hour rated wall, we simply note that it complies with IBC table 721.1 parentheses two, item number 14-1.5. Now, one thing I wanted to point out really quick, unlike a solid material like concrete, this rated wall depends on the components that make up and not too much the thickness of the wall. That is why the concrete, if we look up here, had a fire rating dependent on the thickness. So we can look back and see how by simply making the concrete wall thicker, we can get a higher rating. But with this wall, going back now to the interior wall, we are limited to one rating per wall. So for example, wall type 14-1.5 can only be a two hour wall because those components make up a two hour rated wall, regardless of the thickness. The thickness just happens to be what it is because of the thickness of the components. I hope that makes sense. And that's it. That's one option on how you can find a design for a fire rated wall. Before I discuss the second option, I would like to briefly mention to you how you could support me if you wish to do so. If you like these types of videos, I make a lot of videos on building code and things like that and in architecture in general. And if you like them, you can support me by becoming one of my patrons. You can see the information from my Patreon account below, or you can simply buy me a coffee. Information is in the description below as well. Or another thing you can simply do is if you know others that could like this video, just share the video with them. Perhaps they like the information and having more subscribers also helps a lot. So again, thank you. But now let's move on to option number two. Option number two has to do with proprietary or performance based ratings. Now to explain what that means when we talk about proprietary, I think it's best shown by actually looking at an example. So just like before, the two things that we needed is knowing what materials we're using in the wall and how many hours of rating we need. In this case, knowing the materials you're using is very important because when you're talking about proprietary products, you're talking about specific products. So if you know that your wall has gypsum wallboard, then you need to look for a manufacturer that provides gypsum wallboard because it's a proprietary product. Moving with the same example we did last time, let's just use that and you'll see what I mean. Again, we're looking for a two hour fire rated wall that's made out of gypsum wallboard. But in this case, we're going to use a proprietary design. Now, just so that you know, USG is not paying me, is not endorsing me or, you know, in any way to promote the product, but I am going to show you USG's catalog, which will show different designs for fire rated walls. So you can see that on your screen here. In this booklet, you will find a similar approach. If I skip a few pages, you will see that USG separates their walls by framing used. For example, starting on page nine, you see steel framed walls. But if you go on to page 18, then you go and look at wood framed walls. In the earlier example, we said that we were using two by four wood studs. So this section here would help us. We also stated that we needed a two hour wall or two hour rating. So let's find that here. You can see the ratings in red. Notice that the requirements are very similar to what the IBC table called out. The difference is that USG is a proprietary product. And so the description here not only calls out for five eighths inch gypsum board, but it also tells us specific brands and types. In this case, we need 5 8 inch sheetrock fire code gypsum board panels or sheetrock water resistant fire code core gypsum panels or fiber rock panels. So it is very specific to the type of panels that you're using down to the brand and type. There is no wiggle room for these types of designs. You cannot mix and match brands. You must use exactly what is shown here. If there is an option of changing or adding something, it will be specific. And that is about all the leeway you get on this design. 
And similar to the other designs, if I wanted to prove to a plan checker or inspector that this wall is a fire rated wall, I use the number that is right here. It says test number. I simply state that this two hour rated wall complies with UL design number U301. And again, that's more than enough to comply with the requirement. So there you go. Those are at least two ways in which you can find fire rated walls or designs for fire rated walls. Now, before I hear anything or before other people try to tell me, yes, there's many other ways. Perhaps if you're an architect, you use a UL design book and you know what? That is great. But for somebody who's just starting out, going into the UL book is pretty difficult. And also that book is not available to everybody and you've seen the website is very technical so these are two easy ways to finding fire rated designs and there is also another way of coming up with a fire rated wall and that is by a calculated resistance which again chapter 7 of the international building code allows but you know what there's so many products out there both prescriptive and also generic that I've never had to use a calculated fire rated design that I create it's just, you know, there's just so much information out there that I never had to do it. So, yes, there's other ways of doing it, but these last two ways that I've shown you are easy ways to do it. And many manufacturers, not just USG, but other manufacturers also have pamphlets that are free of and available online. So I figured those are easy ways to show you today. Let me know what you think. I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, don't forget to show it to others. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. But for now, this is Archie Corner signing out.